good afternoon, everybody. I'm going to... That was fantastic from Sharon. One more round of applause for Sharon. So I'm not going to talk about behaviour, and I'm not going to talk about dolphins in tanks, and I'm not really going to talk about Tai Jean, because Dominic, when he speaks, is going to tell you about the campaign and what you can do and what we're calling on others to do to bring this terrible travesty to a close. I, I want to start, and I see round in front of me signs that say, Je suis corky, je suis dolphin. And I think one thing we have to remember is that here we are in Trafalgar Square, and we're having a rally, and we're saying what we think. And there are places in the world where that doesn't happen. So just for a moment, I'd like us to be silent and be Je suis Charlie. Be thankful that we can speak out without fear or favor. And now I also want you just to be silent for a moment, not that you're making much noise, but I want you to raise your placards, every single one of them, and this is inside a tribute to all of the dolphins that have been destroyed and tortured and murdered in Taiji. This is our moment of respect for them. Thank you very much. So, what am I going to talk for five minutes about? I'm going to talk about David and Goliath of how good people working together can change the world. So, as Dominic very kindly said, 30 years ago, with my mum and dad, Virginia and Bill, I started Born Free. And how hopeful and enthusiastic and how terribly naive we were. We believed then that the absurdity of locking animals away in zoos and circuses would end within a few years. After all, who could seriously think that we were going to address the crisis of wildlife and biodiversity across the world by breeding a few hundred species in captivity, releasing a handful back to the wild, and claim that locking them up was educational? It was so wrong then, and it is so wrong now, and we thought it would be over in a few years. Well, we were right, but we were also wrong. The notion that captive exploitation of animals is an effective conservation tool is as preposterous today as it was then. And any of you who have been to a dolphin show and walked out and listened to the person next to you say to their son, daughter, friend, mother, brother, father, wow, those fish are amazing tells you just how paper thin the edu educational excuse for water circuses is. But I have to tell you, the prospect of seeing zoos and circuses and water circuses slide into oblivion is slightly over-optimistic. We have a long battle on our hands. There are still 10,000 zoos worldwide. They are still the final resting place of millions of animals. They are still consumers of wildlife, sucking in and wasting billions of pounds every year. And we all know what we could do with even a fraction of that money if we really wanted to save the natural world. But there is a story of hope, and that hope is founded on what happened here in the UK to dolphins in captivity. There are none. There's none. It's amazing. Not a single dolphin area. And I do remember, I'll tell you this bit in a second. I, together with my colleagues at Born Free, at Care for the Wild, at British Divers Marine Life Rescue, I hope they're here today, and many others helped three of the last captive dolphins return to the wild over 20 years ago. I was privileged enough to travel with Rocky and Silver and Missy to the Turks and Caicos Islands, where the Into the Blue project was based, and after six months of rehabilitation, 
I saw them swim free. It was one of the highlights of my life, and I cannot tell you the challenges we faced. People saying that they would stop us getting the dolphins out of the tank. They'd stop us getting them to the truck. They'd break people's legs. They'd break people's arms. They would physically prevent us from taking those dolphins to a better life and to a life of, with a future. And they also said, you are depriving the children of Britain the opportunity to go and see dolphins in captivity. Be that on your conscience. I can tell you now, I did not get one single letter from one single child saying, you have deprived me of seeing dolphins in captivity. I got hundreds of letters from kids drawing pictures of dolphins in captivity and then dolphins swimming free. They got the message. However, it may be over here, but the battle is not won. I thought it was, and I was wrong. Like any business where there are large amounts of money to be made, and where if you lose an asset, and that's what a dolphin is, everybody, a dolphin is an asset, it can easily be replaced, the dolphin industry moved on. It may have written off the UK as a bad debt, but it's gone on to build new empires in Europe, in America, in the Far East. So today, there are new challenges to overcome. Increasingly wealthy Chinese customers seduced by the dolphin's deadly smile. US citizens, international visitors, and yes, from the UK, who continue to swallow the captive industry's spin and pay good money to perpetuate the commercial exploitation of dolphins and whales commercial exploitation that, as Dominic will explain, is fed by and sustains the current Taiji slaughter. But the game is changing. The relentless efforts of so many anti-captivity champions, you know them, Rick O'Barry, Naomi Rose, the Garretts, Paul Spong, Helena, John Crow, Alan Knight, Ingrid Visser, Sam Bird, Courtney Vale, Jeffrey Venter, and many, many more. And I include you all in that. Those people, you will not let the battle be lost. And then we have amazing and relatively new assets that we could only dream about 20, 30 years ago. We have The Cove. A film that is changing hearts and minds. And we have the incredible Blackfish. Now, my experience is simple. It takes time to bring about lasting change. But be assured of one thing. That change will come. It is inevitable. I think we'll look back at this time as a tipping point. A moment in history where people of compassion delivered a new vision of what our relationship with the natural world should be all about. I may not live to see it. It takes that long. But I have no doubt, no doubt at all, that we can make this a better world for people and for non-human animals that share this tiny, spinning, used and abused planet of ours. So I want to end with someone else's words, two people. Martin Luther King Jr. said, never, never be afraid to do what's right, especially when the well-being of a person or an animal is at stake. Society's punishments are small compared to the wounds we inflict on our soul when we look the other way. We will not look the other way. <laughs> And then, the wonderful Audrey Hepburn. Simple, brilliant language. She said, as you grow older, you realize why you have two hands. One is to help yourself, and the other is to help others. 
Our hands here today are outstretched and ready to help the dolphins of Tai Chi and dolphins and all other abused wildlife around the world. And finally, finally, there is a reason, another reason, why you have two hands, and that is to give yourselves a round of applause. You deserve it for making the effort to turn out to show your fundamental opposition to the Tai Chi slaughter and the captive industry that pays for it. So put your hands together and thank yourselves. And let's thank you.